Welcome back to another video. So today uh, is a video I wasn't going to do, um, but uh, this lovely mower came in for a sharpen, and uh, it does happen to be one of my favourite mowers. So I thought what we'd do is we just uh, go through um, what I've done to it, and um, it didn't actually come in for a service, but it, it came in for a sharpen, and uh, I've given it a little bit of a service as well. So um, we'll go through the procedure of servicing and um, the machine itself. So as you can see, it's a Ransom's Ajax and it's a late one, it's a Mark V. So it's a Mark V Ransom's Ajax 12 inch cut. Obviously they do have a box with it, I guess. Um, didn't get that. So it came in because it wanted sharpening. Now, um, there's a couple of ways that you can do it um, with these machines. You can, if you're lucky, in the case of this one, you can in situ grind the cylinder. In other words, um, you take the uh, bottom block out with the blade. Obviously, you take the drive off the side so you can drive the cylinder with the grinder. And the whole machine is fastened to the in situ grinder and then we can grind the cylinder in the machine. And you can do that, obviously, if the mower will fit. And obviously the other important thing, the cutter bearings need to be good as well. Um, so if you've got, not got any movement in the bearings, um, you can in situ grind, which is what, what I did with this one. Um, if the bearings had been worn, it's no great issue. Strip the machine down, and uh, the grinder I've got next door, it will do both. So I could just mount the cylinder to the grinder and just grind the cylinder on its own. Or I could have put new bearings in it, reassemble it, and then as I've done here, in situ grind it. So that takes care of the cylinder. The bottom blade itself, luckily on this machine, it, um, it didn't need replacing. So I was able just to sharpen the bottom blade uh, on the angle master um, so I've done that if it had been really worn obviously I'd have had to knock the old screws out fit a new bottom blade and then give that a grind as well but in the case of this mower I didn't need to now this one is um, I've seen slightly better paint but it's in good order but probably more importantly than anything this one is in extremely good mechanical condition. I don't think it's done much work at all. Um, everything on it is, is pointing to a machine that's done very little work. So it makes a good mower, this one. So I'm gonna get you in a bit closer and then we'll, we'll just sort of go through the machine. Let me get my glasses. So let's have a look. Now I've got it. I've got it wedged on the uh, bench there, just so it doesn't roll off. So I think what we'll do, let's um, let's just push the whole thing back a little bit, and then I can prop you on the end of the bench. So hopefully you can see all right. Let's go in a little bit closer if we can. There we are. So yeah, this one, it's, um, as you can see, it's got plenty of life left in the cutting cylinder. It's really not done a lot of work. In fact, it might even be the first time this has been sharpened. So that's a good indicator to start with. Uh, another giveaway is if we have a look at the rollers on it, so let's let's get closer, look at the rear rollers. So you can see that there's the ribbing on it is, is in very, very good condition. There's little, very little wear on that at all. In fact, you can still see a bit of the paint in there. Um, so yeah, the rollers, the rollers are in good shape as well. Um, and we'll just have a, a look at the roll as well. We're here, so obviously, if they're good like this one, um, they should sort of freewheel nicely because you're getting that 
diffing motion, both of them. And then we'd be just looking for a bit of, a tiny bit of end float, which is, it's got nearly none, which is good. Tiny bit, which is absolutely um, spot on really. So the rollers are in really good nick as well. The cylinder's in good nick. Um, I wouldn't mind betting, even though there's a little bit of wear to the outer, those are probably the original front rollers. So mechanically, um, it's it's really good. And uh, let's just turn it around. And then we'll tip it up a little bit and we'll just have a, have a look underneath. So what tends to happen with the Ajax is as they do a lot of work, you get a lot of sort of wear along the bottom of the gear case. And if it's done an awful lot, the actual uh, body itself um, gets very worn as well. So, as I say, this one has done very little work. What we'll do, let's, uh, let's take the gear case off and then we'll have a, we'll have a look at the gears as well. Um, let's get a screwdriver. Uh, let's wrap around a bit. So we've, we've got four, four countersunk screws. As we can see, the gears are in fine fettle. The one I'd be looking at straight away is the, the one on the cutting cylinder, that small one, the one that runs the fastest. That's the one that tends to wear. But I mean, just looking at the uh, gear on the cylinder, that's in good nick. All the other gears are good. Um, so it is, it's, it's a very, very good mower, that one. So we'll just, uh, we'll put the, the gear case back on it we don't need to do any more with that um, incidentally well whilst we're here if you wanted to backlap one of these machines obviously you need to turn the cylinder backwards so uh, obviously if you if you if you do that then obviously you need to drive it and you'd probably use something like a socket uh, on the end of the cylinder but obviously if you start turning it backwards, then um, the machine's gonna start going backwards. So in the case of backlapping this, it's quite easy. Uh, obviously lock the cylinder with something, undo the, the uh, nut on the cylinder, remove that little gear, it's a shouldered one. Once you've removed that, you can remove this intermediate gear, refit the gear and the nut, and then when you turn that cylinder backwards, it's not going to turn the rear roller. So it's quite an easy procedure. Um, or you could just prop the thing up if you wanted to, uh, have the roller off the ground and then just leave it as it is and turn it with the roller going. But I always find it's a bit better to take that gear out uh, and it's a little bit easier when you're using the paste anyway. So I find it easier, but there's no reason why you couldn't just chock it up and then sort of leave the gears on there. So that's that's what you do if you'd backlap it. When I in situ ground it, obviously the bottom block was out, but I put my socket on there and the drive shaft to the grinder was able to turn the cutting cylinder. So let's put the gear case back on. total. Get them all started and then I'll tighten them up.
Good. So that's the, the, the gear case on. Turn the machine around. So obviously, um, when you sharpen these, obviously you've got to remove the bottom blade, which uh, which I did, and that was sharpened on the angle master, and then the cylinder was done in situ, as I just said. Now, um, these are such good mowers that um, even when they're not sharp, they will cut grass. If you've got the cutting cylinder touching the bottom blade, let's have a look again, we'll have it look a bit closer. You can see this one's touching and you can just feel it lightly touching. These mowers will cut grass. They're, they're that good that they don't have to be sharp to cut grass. But if you want them spot on, um, and the owner of this one wanted it sharpened, then if you take it to your local mower shop, uh, most mower shops have, uh, have the grinders to regrind the cylinder and bottom blade. Once they've been done and set, then you really are looking at something that should sort of cut paper all the way along. And you can just hear it sounds nice as well. So this is this is this is going to be a pleasure to use. So let's just have a little go. So and the rollers are working beautifully. They're dipping nicely as they should. So yeah, we'll just go into sort of just servicing them. It came in for a sharpen, but while I had it here, um, I gave it a, a quick wash off and I've just given it a bit of a service. I mean, there's not much to do to them, but um, obviously the first thing you would check is before you do anything, whether your bearings are okay. So whether you've got any up and down movement in the cutting cylinder, both sides, if you have, you're gonna have to strip it and replace the bearings. As I say, this one didn't need it. So yeah, the servicing, um, quite easy really. It's more or less just greasing. So we, we've, got a, we've got a few grease nipples. So we've got uh, one on each. Let's see if I can get you closer. There we go, you probably see it down there with a bit of red grease on. One grease nipple there for the left-hand side of the mower. The other one's covered in grease, the right hand. And then we've got a, a little one on the gear case. Uh, you could take the gear case if you wanted to, but there's a grease nipple there. And then we've got uh, one on each roller. So there should be a little hole somewhere. There we go. So there's the first one there. Down in there, there's a grease nipple. And if we turn it a bit more, we've got another hole there. So that greases the center parts of the roller. I always like to just also just put a little bit of oil on the axle where it goes into the side frames as well. So that sort of finishes it off. So yes, really, once it's, it's, it's serviced, you've greased it, you'd obviously check the condition of your rollers. They're in good order, they turn okay. If they've got stiff and the axle's seized up, quite easy, take the brackets off and free the rollers and you, it's a steel shaft, you just give it a really good clean and refit your rollers, assuming they're okay. They've got woodworm or split or whatever, you'd obviously be looking at replacing the rollers. Um, and uh, needless to say, you, you, you're not likely to get new ones. You get somebody to turn you up a nice set. So this is to say, there's not too much to service on them. And uh, obviously the Ajax has adjustable handles as well. So you can sort of see they're slotted. You can, uh, you can adjust it to your desired height as well for the handles. And then if you wish as well, uh, on the clamp, um, if you wish, you could sort of twist the handles um, to your desired position. Normally they're sort of stuck out a little bit, but you could twist them in a bit if you felt you needed it. 
And then obviously going back down to the cylinder again, we've got the height of cut, which will be done on your brackets. So these brackets here, by loosening the coach bolt, they uh, obviously you set them evenly uh, by dropping the roller, um, it will uh, higher your cut or bringing it up will lower the cut. And uh, as I say, do it evenly. Um, you, could, you could sort of measure it from there to there. There are markings. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure there's some markings on them, but it's probably worn off or not easy to see on the brackets. But anyway, you would, you would do that evenly. Um, that's the front roller, the height of cut. And then obviously the also the important one is your on cut, which is that one there and that one there. So as it wears a little bit and you suddenly find you're turning the cylinder, not touching at all, just back the little lock nut off either side and then tighten the adjuster down and it'll only be just a whisker. That's all you need to do. And then once you've achieved it evenly both sides, um, ideally it, it should cut paper all the way along. Um, but if it hasn't been sharpened um, or backlapped, then um, really it should be folding paper and it should be touching the bottom blade. But you must be able to turn it. So that's the adjustment. So the, yes, I mean, as I say, this one was a Mark V, or is a Mark V, uh, one of the last ones that they did. Uh, they haven't changed all that much, um, but as I say, that's, that's one of the last ones, um, and a nice example too. Beautiful. Yep, I'm sure the owner will thoroughly enjoy using that. It's a great mower. Anyway, um, I hope that was useful to you. Um, yeah, it's uh, a very popular mower. And if you've got a fairly small bit of grass and you want it cut and you like a little bit of exercise, the Ajax is probably the mower for you. It's not too heavy either. It's heavy enough, but not too heavy. So it will do a beautiful job. And uh, as, as a lot of people do tend to think, they always think hand mowers are hard work, but if you're cutting regular and it's in good order, set and sharp they're not hard work at all they're actually a pleasure to use and the sound of it is rather nice anyway so it's it's rather a nice rather a nice thing so there we are we have it the ransoms ajax 12 inch cut hand mower a lovely thing so um Yes, thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you've got an Ajax and you're servicing, sharpening it, I hope you enjoy it. Um, see you on the next video.